come along my name is eddie and this is my vlog and today is july the 26th and uh, yeah it's one day on from uh, starting off the harvest and we've run into a couple of problems um mainly in that uh, i stopped the harvester and, and brought it up to this end of the field uh it has got a little bit of an issue we're waiting for somebody ca to come out and look at it we seem to have had a loss of power you know you know that last time we were talking about how thick this was well it seems that it wasn't just that the uh, uh the the, the crop was was that thick uh this this harvester seems to have lost power a bit so we're waiting for an engineer to come out uh for a mechanic to come out and have a look at it and try and work out what's wrong uh in the meantime we've got uh all of this straw sitting around this headland so i've attached up to the g190 uh this this is our new holland bb9 uh 9090 uh baler this is a heston baler so it creates some nice large bales out the back should mean that we get less bales on the field but uh, we'll only be able to stack a couple of them on the trailer each time uh, but it should be good and uh, and should mean that we get some uh, some good bales off here we're gonna bale up our headland and uh, and get this straw out of the way uh, that way when we come to do when our combines fixed and we come to do the rest of the field uh, we won't be uh, squashing and compacting all the straw we've got here so I'm just going to unfold the back of the baler. There we go. And we'll start her up. There we are. Put our pickup down. And, uh, and yeah, this should produce some nice uh, bales out the back. Uh, some nice big Hestons. And going around the field, uh, we should be in a position where that clears off our headlands pretty well. And we do need to carefully do these corners. Whoa. It's not wise to reverse a baler unless you know that you haven't dropped the bale behind. But uh, this early on in the baling, it shouldn't be a problem. There we are. So there we go. And, uh, and yeah, we should get around here fairly well. We've still got pretty good uh, weather for the next few days. Um, we've uh, we've got a decent amount of sunshine. Uh, it should keep nice and dry for the harvesting we've got. Uh, we've got this field, uh, as I said last time, we've got this field ready. Uh, the oats are ready, so that is going to be the big challenge after this. I think that's going to take us a couple of days to get knocked out. Uh, and we also have the canola ready to go uh, down the bottom fields, the other side of the uh, cow pasture which is great other farmers around here are getting stuck into their crops as well which is good to see uh yeah everybody's sort of trying to to get things going um if we get to the uh, if we get our stuff's har our stuff harvested and oh, and the other farmers uh are in need of any help uh then we will go and uh, and see if we can offer up uh, any help uh, around and about uh, but at the moment you know we just we just got to get past this problem ourselves and uh, and get our own fields harvested and you can see I think we've made it most of the way around this field now we should have yeah our first bale just about to drop off the back uh, which is pretty good I'm, uh, I'm very pleased with that and so shortly that will drop off the back and our first bale will be out on the field, which is great. And uh, you can see how some of the way has that dropped. That has dropped. So I know that I can back up now uh, without too much worry. And we brought our combine in this corner. Pick up a little bit of grass with that. That won't be too bad. But we came in with our combine in this corner. Uh, we obviously have started at the other end but that's fine and uh yeah some nice big bales off here i need to uh i need to give it a check uh with our robert they should work in there and i've been assured that uh by by the the guy who sold us uh the robert uh, shredder that it should have no problem with these uh, if it does then uh, then we'll be looking at, uh, at replacing it with something else uh, although 
it's uh, as i said what we'll end up having to do in that instance is probably have to have a uh, a yard tractor up here so uh we'll look at something uh uh, something a little bit small and uh, and and usable up here. Maybe a, a T5 or something like that. You know, not not too much. Uh, we should be able to. Uh, there was a, there were some T5s around a little while ago, uh, which like our T7 were created to to celebrate the centenary of uh, Fiat Agri. And, uh, and as a result, we'll, uh, we'll see if we can track one of those down in the right colours for our farm. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, try and keep the things going nicely. As long as it's a good price, obviously. I don't want to... There's no point in, you know, buying a, uh, a brown tractor uh, like this. Or, a, sorry, a, a, a red tractor. It's sort of a brownie red, I suppose this is. Um, but, yeah, buying one of these, if it's going to cost us noticeably more to get it in those colors just to make it fit in with the rest of the farm all right make sure that we're not dropping the bale which we're not good it's one of those things i you back that up and that is gonna break the back of this baler and i want to avoid doing that as much as humanly possible uh but we're not dropping uh, bales at the top end there that's good uh, it's trying to... I'm, I'm hoping that we're not going to cause too much trouble. And actually, that bale that we thought was our first bale wasn't. The first bale was actually uh, down the bottom end here, looking at this. Uh, this G1, uh, 190 is absolutely great at this, actually. I'm, uh, I'm really, really pleased at how well uh, this has been an all-round tractor on the farm. Uh, it's obviously... It's one that came with the farm. We bought it with the farm. And, uh, and it's just, yeah, it's just run uh, very, very nicely. The whole time I've been using it, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely loving it. I'm, I am looking, and I have been speaking to the guys up at, the, uh, uh, up at our local dealers, see if there's any way we can fit a, a GPS system in this. Because of how the uh, T7 has been running and, uh, and has been... Uh, so nicely uh, doing stuff with GPS. This for stuff that uh, that is doing uh, field work, like the grass work and things like that, where we've uh, where I've said over the summer it would be nice to have a uh, a, a good um, GPS system in here just to make those kind of jobs easier. Um, I'm uh, I'm yeah I'm just trying to see if there's anything that uh, that can be done as far as that goes. Right, are we about to drop a bale? I hope not. Because I really... Ooh, that's going to be close. Let's back it up carefully. Last thing I want to do is knock the bale off the back. There we go. We're okay. I think. Yeah. It's, it's being aware of what's about and uh, and what you've got. Hopefully we can uh, drop a bale off the side or along this side here. Let's just have a look as we're coming up. Are we about to drop one? Oh, we have just dropped one. So that's good. Oh, that had a little bit of a hiccup then. Um, but yeah, that's good. We've dropped another bale there. We are producing these quite nicely. You can see they are a little bit bigger than our standard bales, but as I said, they should still fit in our bale shredder, simply because while they're bigger, they're not that much bigger. They hold, um, they're about one and a half times the size of uh, a standard uh, square bale these days. And, uh, and as a result, hold 6,000 litres of straw. Uh, it just means that when we are storing them, uh, when we got them in the shed, it takes up a little less space for us to do it. And uh, it just means that it's, it makes it that little bit easier on us doing that. Also means that when we're, when we're sorting our cows, uh, we're actually doing uh, a less of a... Uh, less of an amount of... Uh, or le less times to have to refill our bale shredder uh, because, you know, we are we are putting more straw in there each time. Uh, I really hope our New Holland harvester there is okay. 
I would uh, I would hate for it to be a, a dud on our um, on our first season. All right, what I'm going to do is turn this round so that we oh a little bit into the hedge. Never mind. There we go. Uh, see if we can't do this so that we turn rather nicely into this at this top end here. You can see the compaction that's going on, actually. And the difference between uh, the, the height of the straw where we've been driving over with the tractor and, uh, and the bits where we haven't. Uh, and this is the kind of compaction we're trying to avoid uh, with this straw. If we, uh, if we drive over the straw too much, it'll get compacted down like that as well. Uh, and that is just that just reduces the amount of straw we have. Uh, and as a result, is, uh, is is not good for us. It, it you know, it it means that uh, it's less useful in the bale. Right there we are. And the other thing about this, so I keep jumping out the tractor, but I want to show you guys this. We get now get a clear view of uh, of what we had underneath the straw, and it's uh, yeah, it's pretty clear. Pretty clear, pretty clean, uh, not seeing a lot of um, grains or anything underneath. So uh, the combine is doing well from that point of view. I think it was just, it, it was just struggling to get the uh, crop through mainly. But it was also a loss of power with that, which, uh, which was causing it. Uh, in part, I mean, part of it is that this is a very, very good yield on this field, uh, which I'm absolutely ecstatic about um but obviously we want to uh, with the amount of stuff we've got and especially that field of oats we've got coming up uh we want to be very careful uh, about how long this stuff takes us because if it takes too long we are going to end up coming up against the weather later in the season and as a result that is just going to cause everything to uh, to be one big problem Ah, there we go. Ah, oh. but uh, yeah, this is uh, this is nicely getting gathered up here, and I kind of wish I had started in this bottom corner. We set ourselves up rather nicely to come around these bottom corners and uh, and and collect the straw, uh, going one row into the other, and I've completely ignored it. Uh, and as a result, we are. Uh, We've got this really awkward little bit of manoeuvring at this bottom corner here. Oh. But that is hard. No, that's, that's actually we're getting towards two thirds of the way through. Got that down. And away we go. Perfect. Yeah, trying to avoid driving over the straw itself. And the other advantage to doing this now is that while we're carting, we won't be driving over the straw either. So it's not just the combine turning on it; it's uh, it's the carting as well. Uh, that will be uh, that will be sorted by this, and mean that we are in a good position for that as well. Uh, not causing, uh, not losing straw to that too. And as we get further into the field, it gets easier to turn around on these. Oh wow, that was that was very lucky. <laughs> well, he could have dropped that right across the end there. That makes it really, really difficult when that happens. Uh, you end up, uh, well, you end up having to try and maneuver around it, pick up bits of straw, uh, basically get it so that you can actually get access to the row. Uh, otherwise, you've got to go and get the telehandler. And, uh, and and move the bale out of the way, which isn't too far, but obviously delays you uh, a little bit in uh, in getting on with the field. And I'd much rather just get on with the field, to be honest. Oh, yeah, we're fine. I there was no doubt in my mind I was going to make that corner. You have to watch out a little bit um, because uh, I don't. I'm not sure if this. No, because we're on single wheels here. Um, you get the dual wheeled one of these, and the rear wheel turns. It throws the back of these things round really quickly. 
And if you've if you've just missed something with the front of your tractor, you can very easily hit it with the back. And uh, and that's that's not good when that happens. Uh, that can cause you all sorts of issues and damage and and that kind of thing. Right, looks like we missed a bit here. So we'll have to be careful of that. I think. Lift up. I'm going to turn it off. Don't want to get that in my uh, in that. And then we'll slowly go through this pile. Good, nice, and uh, and yeah, that is working well. So a uh, decent number of bales off here so far. Uh, again, very very pleased that this is working uh, as well as it is. I think what we'll do is we'll try and get these collected up and stacked. Uh, I might try and stack them at the side of the field. I don't know if I've got the, where the trailer is at the moment. Um, but uh, yeah, I might try and stack this at the uh, stack these at the edge of the field. Uh, get them out of the way and then we can stack them all on a trailer once the whole field is done. Um, unless I can find my flatbed and uh, it might be down at the other yard. We'll see. But the um, the telehandler of course is up here so it's a quicker thing to to park the baler back up at this farm and uh, and go and get the, the bales and then I can yeah, then I should be able to work out exactly where my picture bottle of that. Bring this round. Don't have enough space there to do that manoeuvre. If that bale wasn't there, we'd be all right. There we go. I can get it. And in. Perfect. We have got it. Uh, let's get up and round and get this last little bit. Uh, this, yeah, as I said, this tractor is performing really well. It's uh, it's done this job admirably. admirably and, uh, and we're looking at being able oh, to get a decent number of bales off it. This would this is the start of the cell sufficiency. We have uh, so far failed to get any hay out, so we might end up having to buy hay in this year. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. We'll uh, we'll check on the hay in uh, in a few days. See if any of it's actually dried enough for us to bale it up. Um, this this nice dry spell for the harvest, I'm hoping, is going to make all the difference. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, but we do have a decent start with the amount of straw we've got. And we're going to have lots of straw off here. We're going to have straw off the oats as well. Um, what we don't pile up and keep ourselves, um, we will be selling off. Um, because straw makes a pretty good price. Uh, but yeah, that's gone well. Right. I'm just going to get out and fold up the back. Uh, oh, once we have unloaded the last bales off yeah there we go so we'll just pull forward a little bit and that'll unload those off like so uh, then we can go and close this up there we are and then we'll head back into the yard. We will uh, we'll park this up. I'm going to park the uh, baler probably next to this, actually. I think this is probably the best place for us for now. It's out of the way uh, and will do us uh, well because, obviously, we want to get this bit. Next, uh, we want to get the uh, main body of this field done next. So there we go. Touch that off and that off and head round to the main barn where we're going to, well, we're going to attach this to the trailer uh, again soon um, just to get this, uh, get that field finished. But I am going to pop in to the shed here so I don't have to walk all the way around uh, to do something that, you know, I need to do anyway. 
I'm gonna hook this back up to this, ready for when the combine's going again. Although, actually, no, no. I'm gonna leave this here. Because, uh, yeah, if I can find the flatbed, we'll use the flatbed. But first, I wanna grab this. Attach my lines. Oh, no, the whole thing is detached. See if I can find my bale spike, which should be around here, out of the way. Yeah, there it is. And then we can head over to the field. Get ah. those bales moved out of the way. Uh, it's especially important that we move the ones that are on the uh, on the headlands where we're looking to turn in the combine. If we can move those out of the way, then that is going to make things easier overall. There we are. Where is... Uh, so, uh, yeah. Things like these ones over here. We've got a nice space at this side of the field here. So what I'm going to do is get this round. Spike the first bale. And just stack this over here so that they are nicely out the way. Like that. There we go. Uh, so a few more bales to get off the headlands. I'm going to get these stacked up. And uh, and we can have a look at it in a minute. But uh, all in all, I'm pretty happy with this. So I think we're about halfway around the field at this point. And uh, this is my 12th bale. Uh, we're making a nice little stack of them next to the entrance. Uh, that is that is a whopping 72,000 litres of straw that we've got off just these headlands, uh, which is absolutely brilliant. Uh, very, very pleased with that amount. Um, it's going to keep us going uh, really nicely in the cows for quite a while. Let's get this. Uh, unloaded onto the stack. Yep, there we go. And, uh, and yeah, should mean that, uh, yeah, we got plenty to keep ourselves going. Won't have to buy any bales for the cows for a while. Now, I'm stacking them like this, uh, just too high, uh, because we'll be able to pick them up two at a time and get them into the yard. Uh, right now, I just want to get them off the field and get them out of the way so that once we've got the combine repaired, and uh, I can start back again, hopefully tomorrow on this field. Uh, then we should be able to uh, to just get straight in there, get the rest of this field cut uh, and bailed. And then we can look at getting the uh, rest of the field, uh, getting the whole lot of straw put away. Um, they'll be fine until then. Uh, I'm just, I, I do have a little bit of a decision to make exactly where I'm going to store the straw. Uh, we obviously have the oats are going to be a huge amount of uh, storage for those. Although, thankfully, it's not It's not that we're doing a... Uh, it's not like we're doing the wheat on that field this year, which would, which would have a naturally higher yield. Uh, but we do still need to make sure that, uh, that wherever we put these straw bales isn't going to be in our way. Uh... And that may mean, even over time, uh, looking at building a new hay barn or straw barn. Somewhere where we can uh, just store this stuff uh, that it uh, keeps it dry and at the same time uh, keeps it out of the way of the rest. Uh, but uh, yeah, that, that kind of depends on how we develop our grain store over time. And uh, that is a massive storage barn we have up here, so it, it makes sense. Uh, to use it as such at the moment. There we go. Right, I need to head down the other side of the field, and then I've got the bottom end of the field to do, which has a couple, uh, has slightly fewer bales, I think. Uh, and then we'll see how many bales that we uh, we end up with on here. At the moment, though, I need to be a little bit closer to the crop because I can't see where all my bales are. So bringing the final bale back now and uh and yeah i think we've got 30 bales here uh if i've calculated this right 
Uh, we've got three stacks of six, I believe, uh, followed by uh, one uh, with one bell at the front of each. So that should be ten. So uh, three, six, seven. No, seven. Uh, seven times three is twenty-one. So we've got twenty-one bales here. Uh, another another row, and that would have been uh, that would have been it. But yeah, twenty uh, twenty one bales here. That's pretty good. Uh, I'm very happy with that. Uh, that gives us hundred and twenty six. Uh, yeah, hundred and twenty six thousand liters of straw. Absolutely brilliant. Very very happy with that. Uh, so I'm going to take this back, and uh, and yeah, that's been a pretty successful day. I'm hoping that we're going to get this fixed today uh they're coming and they're coming later this afternoon uh, and then tomorrow we can get in here nice and early and get this field finished off for now though i'm gonna leave this here and uh and as a result uh this is the end of today's vlog so uh all that remains is for me to say thank you for watching i hope you've enjoyed today's vlog please give it a like drop us a comment and give it a share and for all the latest videos from the farm, please subscribe to the channel, ring that bell, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.